Okay. So we've got this triad here in arpeggio, root three, five, three, five, root five, root three, root three, five, three, five, root, right? It's like, uh, okay, in the key of G, and that is what it is at home. Too. So, let's see what else we are going to... So, we did the one more example here. And we can warp this back just to show you uh, that it... Uh, this is the pentatonic pattern stack. That you can make the cage shapes with this pentatonic pattern stack. And that indeed, the pentatonic pattern stack is made from these guys without the four and the seven. Now you might be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, I don't want to leave notes out. I'll be doing this all day. You know, it's like... You know, and it just wants to play more notes. And you do want to play all the modes. That's what happens you, when you add the fourth. You're, you're essentially going into a modal analysis. So we do want to have all the notes. And we can do that on the short stack. The barred short pattern stack. This is the same pattern stack we were just looking at. Except with the fours and the sevens added in. So now we've got all seven modes. We have three is the C mode, okay, or the Phrygian mode. Six gives you the G mode or the Aeolian mode. Two gives you the D mode or the Dorian mode. Five, this is if you go five to five now. So it'd be two to two, it'd be six to six. Five gives you the Mixolydian mode, the dominant fifth, which is the A mode in, in caged. Whoa. That's, you know, that's pretty heavy. That, that, that would be the A mode in caged, you know. So in other words, if I'm playing in C... I want to go to a G, which is the fifth, right? Okay, I can play just an E way up there. But if I'm doing it down here and I go to the... Um, let's see. The, the fifth is, is the A shape, okay? The A shape is going to be your dominant shape. That's depending on which one you start on. So, it would have to be here. Okay, so it's pretty close. It's just like when you're playing your guitar uh, with the E. You go E, A to D, and D is, uh, to B rather. And B is always your fifth, right? So it's the same thing. So the G would have the A shape. And what I'm saying is that is the dominant fifth. Why? Because if you play, now we're getting into a diatonic scale. I'm pointing at the, trying to point at the, um, at the screen there. It comes out backwards. So it looks kind of silly. Not polite to point anyway. So if I try that, we're going to play the C. This is a this is a dominant. Okay, let's try that one more time.
All right, so uh, I see what we did. We didn't start on the fifth. We were supposed to start that here. We were starting on the second. So where I thought the uh, four or five was, was the root two. Okay, so we we're supposed to start that on the second here. Okay, and we're gonna do this. Um, I'm gonna try this. So watch this. So right here, it, it's the four or five. So we don't want to get confused with actually playing a G shaped G uh, with the F sharp and everything, you know, because you want to play a dominant. And as soon as you take it off that F sharp, okay, as soon as you get rid of that F sharp, you're talking about the key of C, not the key of G. So we bring that up there. So it's it's easy to get confused with is something a um, is this a G shape C? You know, there's a difference between a G shape C and a G shaped G. Here's a G shaped G. Okay, but this has the F sharp, so it's a key of G. <clears throat> All right, let's let's move along because I, I try to I try to do these uh, they're kind of review subjects and and we kind of get a little lost in the sauce or just drawn away from the um, the main subject of this lecture is the different patterns. So this pattern gives you the short or the barred version of the seven modes really. You know, and you just count up three, four, five, six, seven, R, two, three, four, five, six, seven, R, two. You know, you count them up. You know, not so fast that you can, uh, that you lose sight of what notes you're playing when you're playing them. So you're saying seven R while you're playing two, three. You know, that's not what it is. These guys can be played from the bar, but as you know, they start heading to the left. The pattern goes to the left, and even with the warp. It's, it's still going to take some of the notes to the left. So when we, we, we had to come up with a uh, different pattern for the capo or for the um, open chords, which is down by the fret nut. Okay, we can, couldn't go down any lower than the fret nut. So that's how I come up with this particular uh, configuration. And what I've done is even, I've, here, here we go, it's the S, S3XL right here. Okay, let's square it up. Here's the X3XL, whoops. This is the X3XL right here. All right, and on top of that, you get this stack of four notes. By the way, this one I, I should have um, kind of um, removed that from the picture. You know, that that's not important. If it's a don't play, it doesn't have to be in the pattern. Because you like to see the pattern has its shape. So that'll be fixed when I get to it. But anyway, this is the pattern and it just repeats. Notice we have our seven modes. So we have Mixolydian, Ionian, Lydian, we have Locrian, Phrygian, Aeolian, and Dorian. That means if I play from 2 to 2, I got Dorian. From 6 to 6, I have Aeolian. From 3 to 3, I have Phrygian.